Hey everybody, welcome back to Chase the Unknown. We are here this week with Christina Went. Hey Christina, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you guys? Uh, can't complain. Right. Can't complain. So we heard that you do acting, you do modeling, and you are a YouTuber. What was that like and how did you get into it? Um, well, okay, so the funny story, the first acting job I technically had, I played Baby Jesus in a church's Christmas performance um in Washington state so that was the first acting I'd ever done but I didn't really start acting professionally um until like 2013 um I have been acting since then um modeling as well not as much modeling but I definitely want to start modeling some more though but YouTube actually came out of an idea of just creating um acting tips for uh, actors and like modeling tips just to help them out on their journey that's really neat. And that's cool that you can, you know, help your, uh, your fellow artists as well. Exactly. So you were on the set of I'm Not Ashamed. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I have just recently seen the film. Uh, I like it a lot. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead cool. and let you actually introduce the film and talk about it. Um, and then we'll, we'll get into the questions. So. Okay. Um, basically what I tell people whenever they ask, like, um, whenever they ask, like, any films I've been in, I always say I've been in the movie I'm not ashamed and they're like oh what's that I'm like well it's based on the 1999 school shooting at Columbine where Rachel Joy Scott was the first girl killed um for being a Christian and that gets them more into that or I have some people that are like I didn't even know that happened they weren't alive then then I have some people who are like I remember exactly the exact moment where I was and everything um I don't remember where I was when it happened but I um, I do know that we went and visited the school after the shooting happened and it was, um, it was amazing to be a part of that movie, to bring such a remarkable story, such a true story to life and to show Rachel be going from like a sneaking out girl to a devoted Christian who knew where she was going when she died and to be able to play a high school student in a lot of scenes with Macy McLean, who played Rachel was just amazing she i i don't obviously i don't know rachel um but if macy was playing rachel which i know she was i could just see and all the pain and emotion that um, rachel went through every single day with her school with her friends turning her turning their back on her um and then trying to be a friend again and um all the pain and um, stuff that she went with went through oh yeah um and that's a, that's a part of like that's I feel like uh, oftentimes uh, compassion is represented as something that, uh, that you know, brings you joy, that, that's not really showed as a sacrifice. Um, and this film uh, kind of put a little bit of a spotlight on that. Um, and I think it's really interesting also that it was, it, it had the Columbine shooting in it, but any other film would have made it all about the Columbine shooting. This one made it about a message. Um, now, of course the shooting happened, but the message was compassion. And I guess if I can ask like a philosophical question, um, what, what, what does, you know, this compassion that she showed um, in the film, what does, what does that mean to you? And what does that look like to you? Um, I think that like the compassion she showed for everybody, um, even the kids who weren't the most popular, the ones that got bullied um, more often, the way that she just loved them and wanted to be their friend is like, something that I hope that I'm actually living out. Um, I don't want to be like somebody who's not friends with that person just because it's not cool. I'd rather be friends with someone if it's not cool than be friends with the cool kids. Um, just because like, for me, compassion means to just accept everybody, to be friends with everybody, to love everybody, um, no matter how cool or uncool it is. Um, and the fact that Rachel lived that every single day for life makes me want to like try harder um harder than i already try to be friends with the people that most people don't want to be friends with actually like i remember when you watch things when you see things they they feature her a lot because was she not one of the first students like she was sitting outside right yeah um her and her friend were sitting outside and um she was shot and then her friend was shot and the last thing that she or that he heard um, her say was the shooter had asked her, 
um, do you still believe in God? And Rachel said, yes. Yeah. Okay. And, and um, well, I don't remember exact words or whatever, but yes, yeah, she was the first person killed and nobody or everybody is saying like, she wasn't killed for her faith. She wasn't killed for her faith. She was killed just because the shooter wanted to kill somebody. He let someone else live. She, who was a Christian, she was killed because yes, yeah, she was a Christian. She would not deny it. And she was nice to everybody, even the shooters. Like she wasn't, she didn't pick on people. Um, she loved everybody the same. Were you there the day they shot the scene where she got shot? Were you once up that day? Yes, I was. Okay. Um, How did the demeanor change within the cast and crew once that scene happened? How did that how did that affect the cast and crew? Unfortunately, actually, I was I was in the schoolroom, but it was a closed set. So <laughs> only the people that were needed for that scene were allowed mm -hmm. out to see the scene. But just knowing that she just got shot for her faith, like mm -hmm. um, it was a little more like not sad because we were still very happy. We were on set together and got to see each other again mm -hmm. um, for like the third week. Um, but it was just knowing that that scene was being filmed. I think, I mean, I was like, I was sad. I mean, like just for um, being killed for your faith, that's, that to me is savage. That's a savage murder because nobody deserves that and you shouldn't be murdered for your faith. But I think she was the true martyr um, just because oh, yeah. she was the one um, to be murdered <laughs> for her faith, like back in Bible times. What was there any like passage uh, specifically in her, the, the copy of the journal you got that stuck out to you? I'm trying to remember, like we have this poster that we got at the premiere that was actually the um, project she did for one of her classes. Um, and it's a handprint and it basically says now, don't quote me on it. Cause I, it's been a while since I've read the book. Um, but it basically said that um, I want my hand to reach somebody someday. Um, I mean, close to that, not exactly those words, because again, this was like five years ago that I read this. Um, and so it was just like, she is still touching the world today, even though she died because her story is moving people. Um, it's being shown to kids, to high schoolers, to college students, adults even that like are so moved by it that they become a Christian because Rachel's like her life is what is what God would want you to be like. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, that that's part of the movie that stuck out to me, not just because it was at the end was because just, you know, when you saw her hand like that and you're just like, wow, like she really was a very compassionate mm -hmm. person indeed. Oh, yeah. Um, one thing we haven't touched on so much yet is uh, your YouTube channel. Yeah, I have um, some. I've like kind of ran out of ideas for like acting and modeling tips. I have some, but um, I just, well, it started out that way. I have other, other videos on my channel, um, but it started out with acting tips on because like I couldn't really find lots of videos on the stuff that I'm doing videos on. And so all I would find were articles. I'm like, okay, well, how come nobody's made a video on it? Like YouTube is watched all the time. So someone's got to come up with a video for something. And so that's how I ended up creating a YouTube channel. At first it was just going to be like demo reels, like stuff I was in. Um, and then it just turned into a, a full blown channel with um, lots of videos um, about like acting tips, modeling tips. I have a few vlogs. I mean, like daily life. Well, I don't think I have that yet, but, um, I just, it, I do have a lot of acting tips that I hope are helping people. Um, just like acting terms you hear on set. Like I wouldn't have known any of this stuff had I not actually researched it first, but there's a lot of, um, acting terms that you would hear on set that you're like, I get action, I get cut, but like, what's all this other stuff? Oh yeah. And actually, and they expect you when you get on set, even if you're new, they expect you to know it. What is like the key, um, the key attribute that makes a good actor uh, that makes a good actor. Good. I have two actually, um, okay. taking direction, being able to like, if you mm -hmm. say, you know, your line one way, the director's like, Hey, you know what? I want you to be angrier, sadder, 
happy or whatever, being able to take that and actually listen and deliver that, those lines. So being able to take direction is good. And I find being punctual is a good thing. Um, be there 15 mm-hmm. minutes early. If you're on time, you're late. And if you're 15 minutes late, they don't want you anymore. Um, yeah. Which I try and do 15 minutes. Sometimes I'll get 10. Um, but like the one, the one uh, set of videos I do, I've been like on time, like exactly unfortunately like five minutes early or the time that he says to be there and he's okay with it i've done videos with him for like four years um so at first the first couple of times i wasn't late but you know when you hit traffic then you got to get gas you leave him plenty of time and you yeah, still end up being late yeah. yeah i remember this if you're if you're early you're on time if you're on time you're late and if you're late don't even bother showing up They've there we go late. that's what it was it- Definitely. There's, and there's people who are clamoring for your part. Oh um, yeah. And so they'll, they'll find somebody who wants it just as bad. And it's cause like, yeah, uh, I'm not sure if I already said this, but cause time is so important uh, everywhere, but in this industry, especially the time is money. They got to get oh, that. Oh yeah. Um, or else, you know, they're going to miss the release date and all that. So if you happen to be late, well, and they happen to have two actors that they really, really wanted for that role, but you know, you can only have one and that one actor's, late for like the third day in a row they might be like okay you know what we're not going to work with her anymore and they'll go with their other actor which they wanted just as bad i think that too actually makes a good actor for me um is somebody who is kind and (laughs) understanding because you understand people um and and as uh, we've already and i've mentioned in previous episodes somebody who's honest as well yeah i think it, i think it that's what makes or breaks their characters and how they are on set and how they are cuz i understand that there are some people who are method actors and so they don't get out of the role like johnny depp is a method actor from what i've read so when he plays jack sparrow he's jack sparrow until the film is finished filming he doesn't get out of character not even when he leaves set so we have to keep that in mind as well. But if they're not filming and they just see you on the street and they're just as kind as if as if they were, you know, you've seen them other times, then that's that makes to me that's more important than than you know how good your acting is. I'd rather you be kind to people than oh yeah, be the best actress or and for and for the simple fact, honestly, that the people just like working with nice people too. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's that that's the whole point that. of. Rules. Mm-hmm. You know, the me, I, I got into this whole industry because I like people. I like to meet everybody and I like to work with people. And it's also the, you know, the art of the craft as well. You know, it's fun to play these different characters and, and to push yourself to be, you know, this, this character or that one. But then, you know, when you get off set and you just make all these friends on set too, to me, it's just, that's the mm-hmm. fun of it to me. You know, you come home you know, with friends and you get to talk about something that you both enjoy doing. Oh, yeah. yeah. It works for me. What's your t- acting technique, Christina? Are you a method actor? No. no. Um, I pretty much, like, I'll get into the role, like, I've um, never really had a role that I'm, like, a different character than myself. But I've always pictured if I do that, it'd be something that, especially if I have to be, like, completely opposite, like... I'm a nice person. So if I have to be like a mean, rude person, I would actually, I couldn't just go to set and start immediately acting. I would have to. And I told my parents this, I'm like, if I ever get a role that's completely opposite to me and I act like that, just know it's for the acting. Um, I just have yet to get that kind of role and I think it'd be cool to get that. But honestly, I will just practice my lines the way that I would read them. Um, the way I think that, because it's all about I mean, as long as you don't change the, as long, if you know the meaning of the sentence, of the paragraph even, um, just don't change the meaning of it. I mean, if you could like change the inflection of how you read it without changing the meaning of the words, um, unless they literally say you have to act like this, say it like this, because it means this and it has to be that way, like a true story or something. Um, other than that, just like interpret it the way you think it would be red unless and then if you get otherwise then just change it um i guess making a choice in the first place like not like hesitating like interpret it your way and do it because if like if you hesitate that's gonna be hard to redirect but if if you made a bold you know honest choice 
the director will be like, oh, okay, okay, that's neat and all, but uh, let, let's you know move you this way. It'll be easier for him. You and Trinity were on a, were you guys on a modeling gig together? The um, Wellspring Living. Could you tell me more, a little bit more about that? Uh, Cause it seems like a really interesting project. Um, yeah, well, Wellspring Living helps girls um, get like back to not life as normal, but they rescue, they help get them out of human trafficking. Um, and they give them a place to stay and training to get a job and high school diploma. Um, so that way they can move on with their lives um, and not have to like be out there by themselves. Um, and so what I was a part of was the gala that they did, had. Um, and so I portrayed like one of them getting out of or getting a job, getting back on their feet. Um, but like Wellspring Living is great uh, story of compassion. Um, they show compassion to the girls and the women who are in, in human trafficking, whereas some people might turn their back like, oh, well, they wanted that. Nobody wants human mm. trafficking. No. It's not something that it's not even something that really gets talked about a lot. Um, you see news stories every once in a while. Um, but it's not something that's constantly talked about and constantly reminding people, Hey, you need to be actually vigilant on what you see. If you see a 12 year old walking around with a 50 year old and she doesn't look like she wants to be there, maybe you should call the police. Cause yeah. obviously there's something going on there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I like uh, the support that they, they give as well. Um, as you said, that's just the support for life. Cause there's emotional support and then you've got to, you've got to start a new life. Um, I was actually on a project, um, that, that highlighted that, that highlighted human trafficking. Uh, and it's, it's while I was researching it, it's crazy how, how prevalent it is. Um, yeah. even in Atlanta, even it happens. And you're just like, wow, like that's, that's so close to home or, um, like a, a lot of major cities, it's a problem. And if I'm not mistaken, I know at one point in time, Atlanta was the number one hub for it. Because yeah. of the airport. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah. But I'm not sure if that's still accurate in 2020 or, but I know that was at least in 2018 it was. Um, last, I, oh. airport. last I heard, actually, I think it was California or Texas moved up to number one, but um, Georgia was definitely in the top five. So mm. they, it's like, it's like people, the police, the sting, sting operations are like, oh, well, we're not going to go to Atlanta right now because, you know, the last five stings have been busted there. So we're going to move our, move it to another state. Um, Ohio actually ended up on the top five list too. And I'm like, Ohio, there's nothing up there, but that would be a great place. Unfortunately, a great place for people to do that because Ohio's not like, I mean, besides Cincinnati and Columbus, like mm -hmm. a lot of small towns are in between all those towns. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't even realize that, that, that we were like, we were in the top five. I didn't think, yeah, the airport, because we have a, a giant airport here. Mm -hmm. But the airport is so big here. That's why it's so big. And anybody can get, kind of get in and out, um, which is why. And that's why I think the ones places with the international airports are the ones that tend to be bigger. Um, targets for it because they can get shipped anywhere, which is Florida is also a state for it because they have so many ports that they can bring people, bring girls and boys because it happens to boys too, um, bring them over from other countries and smuggle them into the United States on boats instead of planes, um, just because it might draw a little less attention if you know all these all these people show up on a boat on several different boats instead of like four people coming off the airplane that look like that because someone will, and actually a lot of airports are training the flight attendants now to notice human trafficking and to notify the authorities even in the air. So that way the authorities can be there to rescue that child. Have you heard like any good tips for people to avoid human traffickers or like spot them or, or anything like that? Um, there was one actually her, she was a flight attendant and one girl had walked, had gone to the, um, into the 
into the restroom on the plane and came back and sat down, sat back down where she was supposed to. And the flight attendant, like with like begging eyes, she, um, the, the girl like told the flight attendant, like basically with her eyes, like, Hey, go, go look into the restroom. She went in there and found a note that said, help me. Um, and so she was able to notify the captain who was able to notify the airport that they were closest to, who was able to notify the police. So it's like, it's just be aware of your surroundings, be aware of the people that the girls, the boys, the women who don't look like, um, they belong there. Like if you're wearing shorts and a tank top and it's 12 degrees outside and you're shivering and you look like you're uncomfortable in that, in whoever you're walking around with, just be aware that that person maybe I mean may not be maybe she likes wearing shorts and a tank top but it's just to be aware of your surroundings and of people around you just because it's so like heavily um it's such a heavily um market that they just and they'll take you off the street they'll take you like um if you find like even an acting job that you think sounds legit or whatever and you don't do your research on it like that person could, it could be a human trafficking ring and they'll be like, Oh yeah, we want you to do it. And so you go and you disappear. Um, just because like, they're like, Ooh, well let's get this person. Cause you don't, you don't know. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. And people seem to think also that like, you know, acting gigs or they don't, they don't catch it a lot. I've, I've had a friend, um, who bowed out of kind of a, kind of a, a weird suspicious gig. Um, the big thing he said is they kept changing the address. Um, that was the first thing that kind of tipped him off. The first address was a legit, you know, acting studio to, to go do the audition at, but then they, you know, changed the address to somebody's house. And then of course it was okay. Oh, no, not this house, this house, which was closer to him kind of tipped him off. And then he thought that was really weird. Have you ever had an experience like that? It wasn't so much like they kept changing the address and I did actually do it, but I had my mom go with me. Okay. Um, which I think is a lot safer to have somebody go with you. So if it's going south or you feel uncomfortable, at least you have someone else there and you can be like, okay, you know what? I'm uncomfortable with this. I'm leaving. And if they are legit people, then they're going to be okay with you not feeling comfortable there. Um, but if they're not like on the up and up, they're going to be like, oh no, well, you can't bring somebody and you can't leave until, you know, we tell you to, then it's like, iffy and that was the thing um I had booked a job with a company and the actually the address was uh his apartment um and the so he was there and then the other person who was the camera she was there and actually that made me feel a little bit more comfortable it wasn't just him um Mm -hmm. but I did have my mom go with me just because we weren't sure what was going on like it was at somebody's apartment that's a little weird. Yeah. Um, and I say definitely, but it, tur- it turned out okay, actually. Good. Well, I say that would definitely good uh, tip as well. You know, always, you know, have somebody with you. Uh, they should never have a problem with that. Um, and, and yeah, and just be aware. Definitely real quick. Um, is there anything else? Uh, is there anything uh, that you want to mention, like any project you're working on right now, anything you want to let some people know about, um, anything you want to say to your fellow actors, models, or? There is a project I'm actually working on right now. Um, you may have seen it online. I think Trinity has seen it. She knew about it, actually. It's called Project Rapture. Mm-hmm. And we literally shot the first episode in February and haven't seen anything about it because of everything that's going on right now. Um, so we're waiting for the green light well um thank you everybody for joining us on chase the unknown today on our uh uh episode with christina went um and i hope you guys enjoyed uh, i'll catch you next time she'll have her links in the description please click those check her out she's awesome thank you everybody mm-hmm.